Welcome back, everyone. This is What Drives You, where we explore the expanse of our human potential and the miracle of our lives. I'm your honored guide, Kevin Miller. In this episode, we have part two of therapy, meds, and 13 other treatments for depression. We continue to walk through a fairly comprehensive list of menu items, in essence, on treatments for depression, apathy, or even just feeling blue and unmotivated and fatigued. In the show a week ago, we did part one and we discussed things like solitude, outside time, exercise, positive input, having purpose and surrounding yourself with inspiration. Well, here we continue on with about nine other menu items that you can pick and choose from to raise your spirits and increase your hope and even make the therapy and meds, if you're doing that, really have more impact. And we worked a lot to be compassionate and gracious as we discuss this very serious issue and not showcase any one thing as the Holy Grail and recognize you could engage in so many of these and still have a clinical problem, but none of these efforts are going to hurt and they'll most assuredly help give you the best chance to combat what is holding you down. We is myself and Randy James, medical doctor and functional medicine expert, and he deals with this in his clinic every single day. So you're going to hear him talk from firsthand experience that he is dealing with literally all the time. Hey, as you hear this, if you've got questions or concerns, we're not giving medical advice here on this one, but if you've got questions or concerns, let me know and I will provide what resources I can. Email me, kmiller at kevinmiller.co. Hey, what drives you becomes your reality. Let's work on creating a better reality for you today here right now. All right, let's drive for a moment and talk through treatments for depression aside from, in addition to, along with therapy and meds. As we continue on this discussion on depression, and again, I'm going to reiterate the point are to look at so many things that we can do, which I, I intend for that to be hopeful. There are so many things that we can do. That's right. There, there are, and that can, in a lot of people, become analysis paralysis. And when you are the depressed person, any potential, you could do this, you could do that becomes a difficult decision, right? That, and so again, we're not speaking to the suicidally depressed. We're speaking to the people who are blue, who are underneath their maximum performance, or they feel too tired, or they feel like we said at the beginning, all of these things could be related to depression as the diagnosis, but they're going to be inter interrelated with everything else that we talk about. And you're right. It's encouraging that, hey, you don't have to be blue. There are so many things that you can do. Yeah. And and I just want to say that with compassion because or these are it's hard. Yeah. And these are, these are likely to help the blueness, not guarantees, not judgments that if you're blue and not doing these, you should be judged. But these are things. And these are also things that are going to help a zillion things. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's going to help any, anything and everything. But specifically to depression, that's what we're looking at. And so on that note, um, I showed you the other day, I found it was a head. I'm always interested in these, in the headlines. Yeah. The headlines are depicting what the pulse is out there, what people are talking about, because the headlines... The news wants to showcase stuff you're interested in because that's what makes them money. So apparently you're interested in depression because they keep posting stuff on that. So this was a recent one on what was the headline was Saint Hope for New Treatment of Depression. This was in CBS and Saint is Stanford Accelerated Intelligent Neuromodulation Therapy. Shows a picture of a lady. She's in a, you know, kind of a medical chair dudes next to her with some kind of a apparatus on her brain. That's showcasing something uh, on the screen. And our point isn't to get into whatever that is, right. unless you want to. Well, I can comment on it. It's going to be under the, uh, you know, big picture kind of uh, thought process of, of neuromodulation. What, which means how do you change your brain? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Is this, I mean, you deal with this. I mean, you have patients that you prescribe to 
yeah. Uh, uh, neurotherapy. Neurotherapy, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and your wife does similar stuff, thinking about it through the educational lens of how... Do, and, and we're right back. And Kevin, this is so big. Uh, it's a broad swath of thought. It's so frustrating because it is so big. But, you know, they throw in a fancy word of neuromodulation and it's, well, how do you change your brain? How do you change your neurons? Well, my goodness, I would roll my eyeballs at you and say, well, go to bed on time and quit watching TV so much. And if you're listening to us, maybe you should turn us off and go for a walk in the woods or a thousand other things. But the, the encouraging thing is that you can change your brain. And there's a lot of things that you can do. You don't have to go to Stanford and get your brain hooked up to something that's going to, you know, not require you to actually go exercise or quit eating too much sugar or whatever, and they're going to modulate your brain. Now, actually, this is what people want to do. Don't make me change my life. Just make me be okay. And, and as I've said before, I don't let people say happy. Can I just be happy again? That's what depressed blue people say. Yeah. Yes, but it's hard work, and it's directional, and it's all of these things. And before you get to Stanford or before you get to some of the other things that we're talking about, don't forget the basics. Don't forget the foundation. Don't forget those things. Okay, so for the person who's doing those and saying, okay, I am, what else can I do out there to modulate my brain? Do I need to go to Stanford and do the saint thing? Maybe. But what else? How do you, and what are these guys doing, right? Like she's sitting there and it's going to be some kind of, the, that that picture where you know some her head's attached to something and it's doing both it's sensing the brain waves and it's going to put brain waves in it's going to put way electromagnetic waves in and we've talked about this before what is light therapy or uh, photobiomodulation or laser therapy or sauna therapy and and we just talked about it last time we said yes go forest bathing yeah go sun bathing that's now don't get cancer this, it's good for you and this is the hopeful and frustrating thing and fr- yeah is it all in my head yes yes it's pretty much all in my head because you know we it, you were t- you're talking about this we've also got people like tim ferris and michael Pollan who are talking ad nauseum about psychedelics right now yeah and what they can do a- yeah. again a- another great thing dr atia as well and what frustrates me however it, again, it should be hopeful, but is how it just as impacting, maybe more, would it be of, I just saw a little meme and it was some little girl sitting there sad saying, I, I had my, I really had my hopes up that I would wake up this morning rich, you know, and how, how would that affect everybody's brain modulation right now? If they woke up tomorrow morning and some foundation for something that you had done or for no reason, whatever. And there was 10 million bucks sitting in your bank. How would that change your lives for a lot of people? At least initially, it would be the best day ever. There would be a perception of happiness. I mean, giddiness of, Oh my gosh, whether it's something I can get for myself, something I can do for somebody else, a stress I can take away. And just, just as much if they woke up tomorrow morning and their most beloved uh, relationship, the person died. Tragically, horrifically, kidnapped, beaten, whatever. How would that change? And again, it's a construct in our head based on X. And that's what we're talking about. And we are talking about modulating, you know, opportunities. There's so many of them when we're looking at depression, ways that we can program ourselves and try to help the blueness, as you said. Yeah. And of course, by the time people are in my office, they're, they're often beyond blue and and depressed and i have spent many minutes probably hours with some people to to try to speak through that bothness of is the pain quote unquote real quote unquote or or is it in my head real or perceived Uh, just as powerful yes and the answer is both all the time both and but for the person in pain, for you to for you, for me to insinuate at all that they're imagining this or that it's quote unquote not real, they get stuck there. And I roll my eyeballs and I. In order for you to get past this, you're going to have to be able to step outside of yourself and with wisdom and integrity and honesty, be able to uh, be mature in order to to see that 
it is both. And, and I, I'm so sorry, right? Like there's not yeah, going to be the concrete thing to do. Yeah. Cause we've got to say this with compassion, with no judgment that, that you and I are just as prone to it. Sure. As anyone. Now we do have the opportunity to every day, every day be doing the things to be thinking the thoughts that will help us guard against sure going down that path. And that, again, and that's what we're talking we're about here. Yeah. 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 None of us have arrived. Like you said, we're always going to be on the spectrum for the rest of our lives of depression. Sure. And we're going to be closer to a one or a 10. Right. And at, at the, the bothness of that is we're on the exact same spectrum towards peace and well-being. Yeah. And then what I keep coming to is there's spectrums on the spectrum because, you know, is it one spectrum of depression or not? Or are there areas of my life where I say, gosh, in this area of my life, I am so inspired. In this area, I'm depressed. Yeah. 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 Uh, both. And I do want to pull out something that you said that honestly is probably worth an entire show. But reading this morning in the book that you saw me, I had it at coffee awareness by Anthony DeMello. And he talked about there specifically, he was talking to psychologists or about psychologists and psychotherapists of which he is. And yet he was poking at them. But he said, most of our patients come there, not for healing, not for a cure. They're just coming for relief. We do not want to change. We just want relief from whatever from the consequences pain we have. of what yeah yeah, yeah, yeah from that's, the consequences uh, I agree yeah and i thought well, yeah that's me I, there's mm-hmm. a bunch of areas that do i want to cure i could make a list right now no i just don't want the pain i don't want to deal with it uh, right i want to have my cake and eat it too yeah. i want to have my cake and not have diabetes yeah and yes and and there are theologians that we know that pound on that like black white right wrong sin and evil and thou shalt not mm-hmm. and then there's ooey gooey ishy squishy everything psychological to th- yeah whatever you're you okay you you just yeah. just be okay just be okay i read something recently that said if your spirituality does not hold within it i'm paraphrasing dramatically if it does not hold within it any accountability i, I question it we that's, right. the, that, that's our favorite spirituality and overall faith anything is, goes whatever doesn't hold me accountable to anything i don't want that's right. And that, that's, that's where I, I think you and I perceive that so many people are stuck in without awareness is I want what I want and I, and I don't want the consequences. We should do a show just on accountability because I... I'm depressed, would, Kevin, right now. I just, I would, but I would raise my, my hand as I am the person. I do not want accountability. I do not like authority in my life. I do not like to submit to stuff. And yet, thank God for the accountability of my body, at how it feels. Otherwise, I would eat nothing but donuts. I was going to say, here's the blessing of pain. That's your line that I... I yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry. And in fact, yeah, now I'm depressed. I now I'm depressed. Well, on that again, and we're gosh, with all, you know, compassion and gravity, uh, type in depression. I just did this. So I typed it into Google. I don't have to go through it all, but I mean, it's just, again, it, it's obviously such a huge, consistent, well, growing topic. When we did that, notice that the top hits, Saint was there, psilocybin was there, ketamine was there. Uh-huh. Um, and, 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 and uh, what isn't at the top of the list is exercise, yeah. go to bed on time, get off social media. And, and it, okay. So back at the beginning, you said you like to go to headlines and yet you're a fan of propaganda. And I would say, well, are headlines reflecting people or are headlines directing people? And the answer is both. Both, both though. I will give some credence to, they're going to put their, what, what they clicks. think I'll click on. Yes. So, okay. So it's, it's the bothness. Yeah. And we also know that the more the headlines put in what they put in, they are also directing some yes. of what people click because sure. that's how the hey, well, thing Well, I have to go and I didn't look is the, is the headline article on the saint thing. You know, I saw it on CBS, but if I, if I read the fine print, was it actually paid content by Stanford by university Stanford. or whoever makes a saint? Right. I don't know. Or you know. whoever owns CBS to make you yeah. click in over here. And okay. So you and I are very skept, uh, ske- uh, beyond skeptical on, on this kind of a front. Mm-hmm. But my point there is there isn't, uh, you know, just like if you Google cancer, the first hit is going to be drugs and surgery and look how awesome we are. It's not going to be go to bed on time and mm-hmm. eat your vegetables. Mm-hmm. And it, it, that's on page 50. You'll, you'll never see it. And so my, my point there on the, on the depression side is people are hoping for the life 
preserver to be tossed to them out there in their waters and their waves and I'm, I'm waters and waves and we're saying yeah you got to do the work of swimming but no just throw me something throw me a bone throw me the life raft and that's what these medicines are and they're awesome right like i it 10 years ago i poo-pooed and would not have even thought twice about marijuana but i've seen it help certain people so much that i would say it's on the table but i'm going to look at my 15 year old and say no yeah that's I just black and whited it, right? Is there if if he if he's an epileptic, then maybe, right? Like that's where yeah. it can be good. I, I wish I had known about it. With yeah, my, for your son, it yeah. would have been. And you know what? Now I would tell your son right now, you better be keto, and you better prove it, and you better prove that being three months there with your brain stuff. I haven't talked to him about that, but yeah. he should. Um, any anybody in the brain world, well, in the extreme brain world of of, of cancer and epilepsy. Even the normal, not functional doctors are going to say, okay, first get to be keto and stay there. And then we'll talk about whatever else. Gosh. I, okay. I didn't, uh, I didn't have that on the list. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, we talked about, actually, I do have that on the list is nutrition, giving the body yeah. what it needs, leaving out what it doesn't. So if, we, I, if we're back to just the basic, hey, here are some ingredients for depression, I'm going to guess you're going to say oh, absolutely. not only nutrition, uh, but good nutrition, but, but keto directed. Well, yeah. Uh, the 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 drug of sugar and we have to say that very gently and all of that but no we Mark, don't you, you okay well, that was our gonna, last show the if you don't you probably don't remember it's two shows ago is i think was on sugar and mainly yeah you don't know this so i did a meme out there i did my research and it was something to the effect of one out of 26 americans has an alcohol disorder Okay. So okay. we look at that and, ah, you know, poke, poke it at, at uh, that. But if we look at all the outcomes of sugar, diabetes, prediabetes, one in three, one in three. So my, my, my statement was, so which is the worst drug and who is and is not an addict? Uh, yeah. There's a, there, 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 yeah. There's another whole show there. And to throw another layer of complexity in there, uh, Peter Atia that I quote a lot, uh, just interviewed, I forgot his name, but he's some psychiatrist in the world of this psilocybin stuff and psychedelics and all of that and the, the history of how we messed it all up and how can we use these things for good. And they've, they've done a construct that, that says, he, based on cost and consequences, what is the number one most destructive drug out there? And by far it was alcohol. So alcohol, because of the downstream consequences of both acute alcoholism, I'm drunk and I drive, and chronic. I, I lost my job and whatever else. Um, smoking was on down the line, well, but they didn't bring in sugar for I, I various was say, reasons. Basic, if we, yeah. That's where I'm concerned. If you look at the number of lives affected. Lives lost, jobs lost. Yeah. Uh, families lost it, yeah. negative consequences. Meaning yeah. if I've got a hundred workers in my fam, in my, in my factory, a hundred workers in my factory and my sustenance is based on their productivity. It's arguable to say, if you got, if you got three choices, do you want them to, uh, which, which do you want to take away smoking, drinking or sugar? You're going to go with sugar. I, you, you statistically, but statistically. That, that is like you say, that is not on the table. Oh no. It's a no, it's, it's, a, it's a paradigm shift because here's why smoking and drinking are clear black and white. You're not going to die without. Well, you and I talked recently about, um, eat what you are, not you are what you eat. And one of the things you are not is carbohydrate, but you are fat and protein and water. That's what your body is made up of and a smidge of these trace minerals. But mostly you are fat, protein, and water. Huh. All right, so eat what you are. And if we I take away all carbohydrates, you will not die. If we take away protein, you'll die. If we take away fat, you'll die. If we take away trace minerals, and you, you, you That is die. interesting. Back to the Alone uh, show yeah. or documentary those guys or eating, what do you ever call it. No, they did not try to go out and find a corn patch. <laughs> well, I, because you could make the case for that, that they were, you know, they need electrolytes, they need sugar. That's what we would in America think. Oh my gosh, they got to go find some fruit or something like that. Or their glycogen stores are going to go down. And no, it was fat. That and they, protein. That they, yeah, fat and protein. Yep. Well, protein as a given and then realizing I need fattier protein. And they went for the hundred days pretty much with no sugar for the most part. No carbs pretty, yeah, at all. Uh, right. Living quote unquote off the land. Meant. Uh, well, it's like your patient, it was a carnivore diet for the most part. Yeah. Well, and we've had two people full on 30 days carnivore diets. It didn't work for them. 
and, and I'm not certainly suggesting that as a normal. And there's going to be people who are fine on a mostly carb whatever. So that's that's not the issue. But the issue is but to recognize. It, if we go the, to depression and we're talking about yeah. this and we're talking about the brain, there's you, you're in the studies of, of keto and brain food, one. And two, what is our propensity when we're blue? Let's just go. Let's yeah. back up. What do people want to do? Comfort food. Yeah. yeah. So if I'm depressed, I am the most yeah. prone to go towards the comfort food, which is the most inflammatory. Yes. That's where I was just going to go. My favorite author in that one is Martha Hubbard. Wait. Herbert. Like a bear, like French Herbert, Martha yeah. Herbert, or a bear at Harvard, and her construct of depression is brain inflammation. Really. And so last time we talked, you know, insulin glucose, and just call it an inflammatory toxic substance that you'll die without, but it has to be super duper protected. And so again, everybody out there hearing me, we have all known Blue Monday and Relief Fridays, Happy Fridays, and. Is the paradigm the construct of too many carbs? And then when we are blue, what do we tend to reach for? A chip, an ice cream, a candy, a something. And nobody reaches for broccoli naturally. Yeah, I've never it, said, man, I'm kind of feeling blue. I'm going to go get a raw veggie tray at the no, grocery store. Even the carrots or something like that. No. I want wine and cheesecake and pizza. That's right. And so he, this is what will people will get it when we say it like this. Um. You and I don't have caffeine headaches, but we know people that do. What makes your caffeine headache feel better? Caffeine. That's right. It's the exact same thing. If you have cocaine and you're coming off your cocaine, what makes you feel better? Cocaine. And you'll die without it. If you're addicted to the level of you'll die without it. That's a, and that's what's happening. But societally, we're blind. We're back to awareness. And it's the last thing the fish sees is the water. And we're swimming in the water of carbohydrates. So back to the average person out there listening and struggling maybe with this blueness and whatever else. It's overwhelming to so many people to say, well, my gosh, you're making me be no carb, low carb, keto, whatever. And I would say, no, be becoming just a little bit more aware so that with wisdom and honesty and grace and integrity, you can say, I think I'm going to skip my mid morning snack and I'm going to Go on a walk, have a glass of water. You and I, I, I like the Perrier, you know, lime flavored, whatever stuff. And, and okay, there's, there's all these other things to do that you can do that will make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so nutrition, I'm going to come because it's such a correlated issue into sleep. This is not rocket science. We talk about sleep all the time, but again, if somebody who's depressed, what's one of the best healing things for the inflamed brain or whatever is sleep. Interestingly, as we are more prone to when depressed, not exercise. Well, uh, and, and you have to be a little careful here on the lay side of things because many depressed people sleep too much. Well, okay, but, but I was going to get it. But if you're not exercising, you're eating the comfort food, even if you're in bed for 14 yeah, hours. Yeah, your sleep is dysregulated. Th exactly. Yeah. So you may be in there forever, lolling around. But you're not waking up refreshed and uh, ready to go. Yeah, yeah, you're not getting quality sleep is where I was going. And it'd be an interesting thing to do with, uh, that nobody's going to notice you're wearing an, an aura ring to show you that, yeah, you were in bed, but how long were you actually asleep? How much deep sleep, REM sleep, light sleep, yada, yada, are you actually getting so that's that's another techno wearable thing we could toss out there i don't know if i've uh, talked with you about it but we're we just selected our first 50 patients that we're going to do this with is heads up health did we talk about yeah it? Okay. yeah i didn't know the device though uh well heads up health is an internet app website that will let your Garmin and Strava and oh. Keto Mojo and Breath Sense and Continuous Glucose Monitor and Aura Ring will automatically connect in and then you can step back and see patterns. Okay. So when somebody says, gosh, I, what is going on? I'm so blue. And you can step back and see, well, the pattern of every time we have a stressful meeting, I have a week of something or every time I get away from my exercise, it's the third week after that, that I get more blue. Or, or, or. Now, now I want to caution that, that because now we're saying you, at the end of the day, back to AI, right? Yeah. Like the, you're going to wake up and, and your watch is going to tell you if you're blue or not, right? Like I, I don't believe that's ever going to be the case, but it is a feedback loop to the captain of the ship that's steering through the waters of life to say, be aware of the pattern of sugar, 
of lack of exercise, of sleep, of stress, that so that you can steer towards, and I'm always going to come back to better sleep, better exercise, better way to uh, communicate with your wife and your kid and your dog and your boss in order to achieve or to be heading towards that which we would call not depression or peace, not anxiety or satisfaction. And you have to wake up tomorrow and do it again. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, and as you read off the list, and as we're talking here, I keep thinking of, you know, so people are listening and this is going to be relevant for a lot of them. I mean, to a degree it's relevant. We're all on the spectrum. It's relevant for all of us to hear. Some of those of you who are dealing with being blue, uh, obviously it's directly relevant, but a lot of people are going to hear this who have loved ones, family members, whatever, who they're looking at these, at this council to say, well, how, how can I help this person? That is where I like the list of menu items. I'm going to call them here because you can look at, let's say it's a teen and say, what can I get them to do? I may not be able to get them to sleep, um, to, to change their sleep. I may not be able to get them to deal with their comfort food, can I invite them on a walk with me and try to help with the exercise and the BDNF? Maybe so. Can I help with, uh, you know, one of the other aspects of ingredients here, the input that they're given and try to give them some inspirational content. Can I help them with some solitude? Can I get them outside? You know, we're going for what can you get them to do? Uh, another one here, and I had them separated. I guess we could put them together, but is faith and hope. Hmm. I mean, we just spent the morning mm -hmm. talking about faith, but when we see depression, when we see apathy, a word that goes right along with that is off, often hopelessness. Yeah. If there's nothing they're looking forward to, there's no bigger picture, but faith. Do we have faith in, and we can look at this, do you have faith in a bigger, in a greater purpose, whether that's humanity, saving the planet, my gosh, a cause, just a cause. Go to, so get out of spirituality even and just saying, do I have faith in humanity and a cause? And we can see somebody go who's depressed, find inspiration and uh, hope and find it something to serve. Yes. You give them a, a, a disabled cat. Uh, I mean, I'm not poking fun at it, but no. just saying something to serve, something to take care of, a plant or whatever sometimes. Now, spirituality then is another piece. If you feel that there is a, a greater purpose, a greater power, and a calling to that, it could be a great ingredient. It's one that well, I, I benefit from. And, and me too. And so then we, we run the risk here of overly clinical, oh, an overly clinical approach to this to say, is faith dopamine and epinephrine and oxytocin and these other things? Sure. Uh, right. Uh, but then why not just inject some dopamine in there at the right amount and, and those kind of things. So there's, there's the mystery. That's my point is there's a transcendent mystery right now that even with the best of technologies, we, we don't know, but here's what we do know. Is there really well done studies that will say, Hey, for those people who are consistently in this realm of, of faith activities, do they tend to have less depression? Is the probability of less? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, in that realm, the people who tend to belong to communities where people are like-minded, purposeful community, do they tend to have less depression? Yes. And that's where I'd say the science is overwhelmingly in favor of having a faith in something. Mm -hmm. overwhelmingly. And we've just gone through 10 or 20, 10 or 20 years of the quote unquote new atheists who say, no, nope, you're just dancing to your DNA. You are, you're just a mass of chemicals. And at the end of life is nothingness and, and, you know, eat, drink and be merry. Okay. Well, you know, we're not going to put the guy in jail, but at the end of the day, if you, if you are in, in a group of people who tend to think that way in mass and whatever, is there more depression? Yes. We know that. Now, that's not going to be popularly written on the Google thing there, but it, at least through my lens, when you honestly approach the situation, it, you know, not in a religious sense, oh, but I, just I saying was, in a faith community, oh. a purposeful community. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were going to, because I was going to say, even if we get outside of, you know, Kevin's belief and Randy's, you know, right. where you put your faith, that if we're just looking at correlation, I am very aware that as I look at the world of personal development, 
and self-help and this world that I live in and the, you know, hundreds of books sitting here from the best of the best. I don't know of one atheist within there. Now that's a volatile statement right there. That's not me saying right or wrong. It's just a flat correlation. I just don't happen to have a book on the bestseller list. That's from a devout, you know, uh, atheists. Now they may be agnostic. They may not claim whatever, but it's interesting correlation that they all believe that there's some a transcendent. Yes. That I put Cutler on the, on the, on the edge there since we, you okay. know, just, but he, but he, uh, he openly also says, you know, that there's no, you know, God faith kind of thing over here, but he's passionate about service to his causes. Yeah. The, the earth and animals and, and, writing and creativity and all. Well, I would okay. say he has a faith. He has a hope. He has a greater purpose yeah. for his life. Yeah. Outside of just himself. Uh, yeah. And he might wind up depressed, but the chances are less scientifically, epidemiologically, statistically, we would say. Um, and, and so for somebody out there who's tending towards blue, I agree. That's an ingredient on the list is to say, okay, well, Step back and, 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 you know, in the bluest of blue, you're not going to be able to think of anything, but on a brighter day, say, you know what? I, I really am passionate about X, Y, Z. Go and invest. Okay. Well, you said the word a second ago in relation to faith and you said the word community. That's another big ingredient on the menu here is relationships. Mm -hmm. A specific, you know, relationships, whether that's one person, a meaningful relationship, you and I have that we get to spend every day. Uh, just about with each other investing in a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Mm -hmm. We just got back from uh, uh, coffee with a handful of guys in a community. And we talked about, you know, church and talked about, you know, social groups, uh, whatever it is, but the power of community, we often find you know, it's talking about correlation. People suffering with depression are generally isolated to begin with, or they found themselves or as they become blue, they actively isolate, right? Not, not actively like they you know, yeah, try they, they to, but tend, that's, that's right. A, yeah. Propensity, uh, to that it, again, if, to pull people into relationship is another opportunity. Yes. And, and I'm so sorry because you know what? People are messy and they're selfish and they hurt you. And, uh, I think this will drive the point home. Like we just said about caffeine over here with coffee and a headache and whatever is like, Oh yeah. What makes me feel better is the actual food. Uh, that's part of my problem. Um, and when people are depressed, uh, a lot of times they'll say, well, so-and-so did something to me. I'm going to withdraw. And so-and-so is selfish, or I just don't want to pour into these needy people uh, because of whatever. And in reality, when we, what we find is when you do do that, it is better. And, and, and my correlation there is I'm going to say, what about physical therapy? Do you remember, uh, you know, you break your leg and you remember what I told you PT stands for? No. So everybody says, well, okay, you got to get the cast off and now you got to do PT. And what does PT mean? It means pain and torture. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So if you're going to a physical therapist and they're all easy, nice, soft on you, they're not doing their job. Yeah. It, the, what's better for your knee is to move it. But every fiber of your being is say, don't move it. It hurts. We're going to go through this a little bit at a time. That's good for you. And we actually pay this person to torture me. Yeah. Can you imagine if we did that over here with depression and we said, you know what? We're going to come over. We're going to yank you out of your bed and we're going to drag you over here to this, you know, pain in the butt people at called, you know, uh, church community or feed the animals community or whatever else. And they're going to complain. And, and it's your job, Kevin, to set up the meeting and make it happen. Uh -huh. Well, I'm depressed and I don't want to be here and all these people are making me mad. But at the end of the day, the probability that is if you actually do do those kind of things and now, now people have to do it with wisdom and grace and integrity and whatever. <sighs> now I've depressed myself again because. <laughs> <laughs> well, interesting because you were, you know, in talking about relationships and isolating, I don't. I don't, uh, I was gonna say the word, so identify personally with the word depression, because I always feel, you know, interested, fairly excited, hopeful, whatever, but I do deal with, and I've been playing, not playing with, but just looking at this more anxiety. 
Um, whether it is, it, we, when we say anxiety, we usually think of it as a negative, like with worry, but I realize that I bring on anxiety in myself by being involved in so much, saying yes to so much, having so many projects, and I can start feeling anxious about these things I have voluntarily chosen to do that in and of themselves, I'm excited about, but you put enough on them and the duties of life. And I just, I deal with anxiety when I do that, my propensity, my natural inclination is to isolate. Right. Not to reach out, not right. to join. Chuck it all. I'm going to go yeah. either off by myself or I, withdraw. You I know. may be to a point of maturity to know I need to go talk with you, but I'm not sitting there in my chair going, oh, I really feel like I want to. Right. I, and that that is so hard. Yeah. And, and this is where counseling and cognitive behavioral therapy and... Uh, you know, the, the, the world of depression and anxiety is so, it's, it's related to all these things. So if we took Kevin on that particular day and maybe you had a little bit less sleep, a little bit too much sugar, a little bit too much caffeine, a little bit too much of this and too much of that, then your propensity of isolation is now that much more, mm -hmm. right? So they're all bubbling in together in mm -hmm. this pot of soup that we call Kevin Miller and you boil over one day and one day you don't. And and so again, as we, you know, big picture this and people are out there, yeah, I'm a little bit blue. What can I do about this? The, the headlines are going to be ketamine, psilocybin, magic mushrooms and marijuana and whatever, because that doesn't mean you have to go over here and tend your bubbling pot of everything. That's hard. <laughs> I want relief. I mean, my I gosh, if I did gosh. not have to, if I could have the level of performance and clarity that I have now with a pill, as opposed to having to eat, even though that you and I talk about, I've gotten Enjoying to join the food. I know I yeah. do like Brussels sprouts. I do like, but my but gosh, if still it's just in the me, rear. Yeah. You know, ice cream, <laughs> pizza, a sea, bar, seafood, chimichanga, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm somebody there. else to come and make it for me and, and all of that. Okay. Well, you, you keep leading into my, my next points, which is divine. And, and, and the next one was, uh, just awareness personal, but, you know, we talked about being present and solitude and stuff, but even that often is a way to look at is awareness of me, not mm. just loathing mm. or whatever, but just awareness of myself. I just recently, because it's interesting. About a year ago, no, it was earlier this year, nine months ago, I had Beth McCord. She's an expert on the Enneagram. Lots of experts on Enneagram, but she is. She's, she's made a big hit in it, and she's done it from a faith-based standpoint. So she mm -hmm. mixes God uh, within that. But my wife on her podcast, which is called Brainy Moms, uh, they just had another Enneagram expert on there. So it got me back into it, looking at it again. And Man, just I started digging in on some areas and just realizing continually of my own lack of self awareness, but excitement at becoming more self aware. That can be devastating. Yeah. Uh, it can be exciting. It's, it depends on where you are, but either way, man, most of us in a in a place of depression, of being blue, we're often I'm going to say on the spectrum of unaware. Well, yeah, we want to. Of who we are, how we are, why we right. are. It's, it's the tendency of, you know, I'm scared in the dark and I want to hide under the covers. Just make it go away. Yeah. And that would be the five-year-old response over here. I don't want to look in the mirror I, and consider right. myself. And getting out from under the covers, it's, it's cold. It's too bright. The light is on. Uh, right? I mean, even Jesus said that, right? Shine a light on the darkness over here. Uh, we talk about... The, we talk about uh, the fish doesn't see the water. They're unaware of the water that they're in, the dirt, the schmutz, the whatever. And in Sh fact, remember schmutz. when you and I, <laughs> we even contemplated awareness as a name for the clinic, as a name for the show, the awareness broadcasting company. I, yeah, I, I, I used that the, for a while. And so awareness is both wonderful, like, wow, this is I, I, the aha moment of enlightenment, of click. I, the light is on and I can see this thing I was looking for. And the other one of turn the light off. You're exposing my and, nakedness. Uh, we just watched the matrix again <laughs> and the scene in there where yeah. he says, I wish I had not taken the blue pill. Ignorance is bliss. That's because the guy's eating the steak. I, yes, and he says, I, know, I don't want to know nothing. I know the steak is not really juicy and tasty yeah. and whatever, but, and it plays, you know, you hear the piano music, Doo -doo 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 -doo. ignorance is bliss. And he bites into <laughs> it. And yeah, there are some aspects of 
I, you know, I've wondered as talking about depression, I have known some of the most tremendous mentors and people in my life who struggled with depression. It's like the more you become aware of, the more the gravity of life, it's, it can be daunting. Yeah. You want to say it's all Even, exciting, but sometimes, man, I just... The more yeah. aware you are, the more grave things could become. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, we, you and I were talking yesterday about experts sometimes get overwhelmed. Like, think about Einstein struggled with this because he could not define energy. At the end of his brilliance... What he could not do, even though he's 10 times better than every, every other human on the planet. And he, he, he bent underneath that. And, and then if, if that's true of him and his expertise, then who am I? And I don't want some of that light to be exposed. But at the same time, uh, it's hard to live life without light and being able to see where things are. So, so here we are again in that big picture thing. Everybody is aware of what they're aware of and unaware of what they're unaware of. Yeah. So we're saying have a posture, a mindset, a thought process, uh, an eating pattern and a sleep pattern to appropriately and with grace and honesty and integrity wake up every day and say, okay, I'm, I'm willing to, be, to have some of my dirty laundry exposed to my own mind. And do the best I can and be in relationship with myself and with God and my friends and my wife and my, my, my dog mm -hmm. and, and go forward. And I'm, I'm going to actually hope for some awareness, some enlightenment that allows me to be becoming a better version of myself as unto God as best we can. And then go to bed with a sense of peace and satisfaction. <laughs> All right, I, I'm going to pull out another Whew. piece. Uh, yeah, another piece here of we talked about relationships and we talked about community in general as opposed to isolation. But I want to pull out, tease out the actual who that we're with because I hadn't thought about it in these terms until we did this show here right now. But that we're saying one, we're going to uplift, you know, better to be with people generally. However, what is our propensity again, when we are depressed, just like we are prone nutritionally to go to comfort food. And when we're depressed, we go to comfort people, which may not be what we need. Uh, maybe, I mean, if it's comfort and it's, you know, your mom to come and give you comfort, that's great. But often what we could use is somebody to help pull us out, somebody to help us see something different, not to counteract us, not to Pollyanna things, mm -hmm. to have empathy, but also to, uh, to change us. And we know the power of people. It's Jim Rohn who's famous for saying we are the sum ultimately of the five people we hang around most. Whether it's, that's, that's not an exact number, whether it's three people or 15 people or whatever, but it's so influencing. You and I have experienced this in different realms. You know, if, if I go hang out with uh, athletes, man, I, the propensity and idea and expectation of myself for my own athletic endeavors goes up. If I hang out with this is, I'm going to, I'll just name this throughout my lifetime. When I go hang out with wealthy guys, because that's who I hang out with more is wealthy guys, my own expectation and comfort with thinking about myself being a wealthier person and having that ability goes up, uh, being with faith-based people being with, I mean, it matters. This is why Weight Watchers is one of the most successful, uh, and, and AA, I would mm -hmm. say two of the most successful organizations because we surround ourselves with people who lift us up. They're there to commiserate, but they're also there to lift up. Let's band together and progress. Right. And it's the power of that. Uh, the blue zone. Yeah, idea exactly. Of, that we have in the office here that we've worked really hard to create that people do. Years ago, we actually, I actually had to make a rule of in this office, you are not allowed to bring in fast food. It stinks the place up and it brings all of us down. And that's a concrete thing. Even as you and I talk about, you know, gray and less concrete, there are still concretes that we, you and I have chosen. We're not going to bring, we don't bring fast food in. And, and even though we don't even think about that anymore, that's kind of a concrete, right? Like, it's not a moral kind of a thing, but it, it, if you brought in fast food, I would call you out. Yeah. And vice versa to call you up, not to shame you, but to say, Hey, 
that pathway is not the best kind of pathway to where I know you want to go. And then we as an office, we, as a family, those and the opposite of that, I would suggest to people who tend to be blue and then they go looking for people to tell me I'm okay in my schmutz over here. And it's a codependency. Okay. I was, I, I, I was going to, I was debating whether to bring up cause we won't name a name, but an acute issue. You and I experienced that together with an employee that was here when I first started working with you mm-hmm. at the practice and somebody, and she had a hard life, hard place, and she made so much progress. I mean, it was, it was some life changing things on the aspects of faith and health and, and hope and whatever. And then, uh, you know, trial happened, stress mm-hmm. happened. And what did she do? Boom. She went right back mm-hmm. to the people who had hurt her the most, but it was comfort in mm-hmm. that hurt. It was comfort and the hurt. It, uh, validation. Yeah. Justification that my angry, wounded feelings are, are validated. Yeah. And I'm so sorry because she wanted relief. Not she wanted relief change. Uh, right. And also relief from any sense of guilt that, yeah. that her own behavior had any part to do with her woundedness. Yeah. And again, we're all on the spectrum of this. So me too, right? Like I want somebody to pat me on the back and say, oh yeah, you're, you're the best. And that other person did wrong and whatever. And, and so this is one of those, again, it really, it gets you out from under the covers. It's cold and you feel naked and exposed. And like I would say to the fish in that dirty water over here, when we take, I think this is an analogy is good. And this is in fact true of fish at home if you don't clean their tank, eventually they'll die. But it's this slow, lingering death yeah. that is kind of like American society. When you, when you clean the tank, you have to take the fish out, right? And put them over here yeah. in bright, sunshiny water. Yeah. Well, when you first do that and you drop them into this new water, what do they tend to do? And they Spin around, yeah. Yeah, they tend to, oh, I don't like it. And what does a fish do when, you, when, when they can't breathe? When you're transferring them over, they freak out. I can't breathe. And then you drop them over here and they spin around. And, and, but in a, in a minute or two, they settle down and, and they are weller. Yeah. What if you That's took that fish and just enough. dropped them back in the tank over here? Huh. Very quickly, they would just die. Okay, now ima- imagine Americans. Huh. And I say, patient, Mrs. Smith, you're in the schmutz over here. You don't know it. But we're looking at your biomarkers or even your attitude or your depression. Now, what we need to do is we're going to scoop you up and we're going to pull you over here. But you're going to say, I don't like exercise. I don't like this food. I don't like going caffeine free. I don't like going gluten free. It hurts me. I'm like, yeah, I know. Bear with it for a while. We're going to drop you over here in this clean, clear, crisp water. But it's cold and the brightness is too bright. And I'm just... But ultimately, you're becoming weller versus where you would have been over here. Yeah. Now, to your credit, though, and I've seen you grow in this over the past years, you are much more gracious and tactful in doing that in steps. (laughs) Coming back to the one, the muse that we always use, the patient that you said at the time, man, the most acute thing for you is you've got to get off the gluten, the bread, you know, the whatever, even if in the meanwhile, you need to keep smoking. Right. To help you do that, because it's the most key thing. I love that analogy and taking baby steps to where people are, according to. Yeah, my my friend Denver, uh, who is a clinician and back in the day, you know, a long time ago, was, you know, in the military, smoke pack a day and really hard charging, whatever. And in late 30s, had a heart attack. And so, boom, awareness, pain. And actually, he knew he shouldn't smoke. He knew he should go to bed on time. He knew all of that. But then along comes a, you know, 37-year-old heart attack. And he's like, you know, so awareness happens. And what was his first step was instead of a, I think he was doing like a six-pack or 12-pack of Pepsi, he changed to Gatorade. Not that much better, but it's a step. Yeah, it's a step, sure. That, and, and so he tells the story and says, that, that was my first step. There's no way that you can cold turkey quit everything 
and come over here. So that's that's the point of today. And in fact, what you just started out with awareness and then blue zones or the people you're hanging around with is, wow, to recognize that I'm a codependent person on this other person and we just commiserate in a way that's unhealthy for us that keeps us over here in the schmutz. How do I help that guy out? How do yeah. the, that guy help? How do I go find a new friend? That's pulling the Band-Aid off pretty hard. Well, I, I actually was thinking about that, though. Like right now, if you are suffering from being blue, if you're trying to help somebody in your life that is, who's the best person to help? It's probably not the polar opposite. It's not Kevin Miller, uh, who's not really dealt with depression and trauma a, a whole lot. Find somebody who has dealt with it deeply and overcome it, who can commiserate, who can empathize, and who knows from a position of helping the way out. Yeah, right. yeah, it, it, yeah. If you if you if you have if a, you're a drowning person, don't go find another drowning person. Cause you're going to, yeah. Find somebody who learned, <laughs> who learned to swim, yeah. but maybe not somebody who's never known drowning as well. Now, if you want to commiserate or get help on how do you, you know, on, on wrecking a business and recovering, I can meet you there, man. I know that <laughs> <You> one, <can. laughs> but, but that's relevant too, to look at the who, I can, um, if, if you want to talk to a person who completely ignores pain and ignores their labs and keeps eating gluten, because I just refuse to believe it. Oh, well, yeah. I can, I can talk with you about that. Yeah. Well, and th this goes back to, we mentioned AA, you have a sponsor. Your sponsor yeah, is not somebody who's never known. That's right. Uh, AA is a great model. Yeah, it is. It's, it is. It's not finding the guy, you know, you're drowning in the water. Don't talk to your friend in the desert who has no idea what you're talking about, but talk to the guy who's on the ladder over there, who's got a good foothold and can reach back and give you a hand up. These again, <laughs> ingredients, I hope they're opportunities, menu items to look at, uh, not as opposed to, but in addition to the ones that the, the only two that we generally see out there in the populace, which is medications, pharmaceuticals, which you've said multiple times, yeah, thank fine. God for them, yeah. for when they're needed, for when things are acute uh, and counseling. And to some degree, you, you can make a case. I can, I'll make a case that we could all use some counseling all the time. I, I, it needs to not have the stigma, uh, that has, it might not be psychotherapy. We've got coaches these days, but somebody who can help you look at yourself, who can help draw it out with wise counsel, or even just being there. If you don't have a person, if you don't, I, I get to have a Randy in my life, somebody who, uh, I don't have to pay you. And you care about me, you know me, you can give insight to me. That is a gift. It's incredibly rare. It's a complete privilege. Thank you, God. Um, and not having that, sometimes the, the greatest place, the easiest place to go or the most uh, relevant is go pay for it. Go get a coach, mm -hmm. go get a counselor, go get somebody. Uh, in churches, sometimes they have the opportunities for a pastor who will do that, though I think pastors are often leaned on that when they are not actually good counselors. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, look there, but... Uh, can And I, I also want to drop a list in here, because yeah. you and I, we always circle back to these basics, these big things, but there is a list of... What about ketamine? What about mushrooms? What about going to Mexico and getting a whatever? And we're not saying no to that. Those are expensive, risky, dangerous, and you need really wise and good counsel down those pathways. But what about some of the other things that are on the list of people saying, okay, I'm really working hard on all those things, but I read about low dose naltrexone. I read about sauna therapy. I read about these things. And so if, if I were dipping into that, as much as I would lean on nutrition, exercise, sleep, and Kevin to help me to pull out of this sense of blueness, um, the kinds of things that, that I would lean on, it, barring the extremes where medicines would, would be the case, um, and probably right now, I would go out and invest in an infrared sauna. And we've talked about light therapy and is that good for your mind and your mood and your brain and stuff like that? Is it the fact that you're taking 20 minutes of solitude to just sit there that helps you? Or is it the actual nanometers of wavelength of the near infrared, far infrared and stuff like that? Uh, to the person who's like ready to spend some money and time on, you've already, you're doing medicines, you're doing friendship, you're doing counseling. I would look at sauna therapy. And at the same time, I would look at light therapy. So yes, go out in the sun. We've already talked about that. Go forest bathing. Light is good for you, but should you pay for a Vilite? 
should you pay for our friend Life Flight? There's multiple companies. And, and the, if you want to Google this, it's photobiomodulation. Does light help mood? Does it prevent dementia? Yes. So I would say go be in the sun. But when do you pay for certain nanometers of wavelength and shove them and one of them actually clips to the inside of your nose and it's really weird right now it's like otherworldly futuristic and all of that does it help people yeah so what's the right person to do that i don't know and for most people in a city i guess if you look up infrared sauna you should be able to find some places where you go do it just like a suntan booth you just pay for yeah. time in it right and, and that's where i'd say go to google kind of Health clubs may yeah, have them. Figure it out. Look look around. Um, low-dose naltrexone is something for people to be aware of, or LDN as it's called, lowdosenaltrexone.org. And uh, is it a viable pharmaceutical, uh, very cheap thing that can can help? Yeah. That's that's a reasonable thing. Marijuana, you know, we've, we've the CBD, marijuana. We talked about those things in the past, but these are all on the list of it within the context of the foundation and the basics. Yes. What about HBOT? HBOT is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Oh. Is oxygen good for you? Yes. Can there be too little? Yes. Can there be too much? Yes. Is it a poison? Yes. Will it explode? Yes. You better be careful. But you'll die without it. Do most of us not breathe well? Yes, we did a whole show on breath work and all that. Well, what if you go pay somebody to shove a little bit more inside of you? Okay, there's a time and a place for that. You can go buy your own HBOT. Do you know that? Your own little, uh, you know, it's a foldable kind of a thing. And you you pump it up. And for a couple thousand bucks, you can have your own hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Hmm. Um now, the reason I'm interested in that is because we live at 9,000 feet, and there is less oxygen here, and therefore, that matters. Um, and then the other one there is, is neurofeedback. You know, should, you've got cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a person feeding back to you and saying, well, that's not smart. Let's try it this way. What if somebody's got a thing on your head and is reading your alpha, beta, theta, delta waves and says, you know, when you do that, your beta waves go all wonky. Let me throw some alpha waves into your head here and also counsel you to, to do that. And I would say, yeah, that's really valuable, but it's time and money and effort. And you know, that's where, uh, that's where people wind up in my office. There's so many options out there that they're confused and now they need help to where do I spend my limited time and money and effort and energy. Well, and as I'm thinking about this, as we wrap up here, I probably will go back and add it to the intro to make sure, because it was probably a good place to start with all of this to some degree. If we are talking, as you're hearing this, if you are in this spectrum of dealing with depression, being blue, feeling blue, whatever, or if you are even maybe even more so, uh, if you're looking at somebody you're trying to help or you care for mm -hmm is we at the core of it is motive is, you know, especially with your look, if you're looking at your, your spouse or your teen or your whatever, uh, what is the motive? I mean, we're, we're looking the at why these, behind their what? Yeah. Where, where can we meet them there and give and address what is a purpose for them to, as you said, roll the covers back, yeah. get out of the warmth, which is exactly what they don't want to do. Yeah. But wh what is the motive? We find that, uh, it's, it's one of the most, it can be one of the most compelling ingredients fuels is and, the motive. And, and, uh, and we, to, to be gracious to people who are there, it's one of the most terrifying things and it's why people keep their head under the covers. Yeah. So is that a bad place to end no that's weighty <laughs> it's a it's a weighty it's a weighty uh, issue yeah. and i hope that people can hear this yeah with with compassion but hear it with hope for hey here's all i've seen we often are so narrow in our own thoughts towards addressing a right, problem or a yeah. goal that here are so many more things that we can add in and actually i'm right now thinking about what you said what's the best Dr. James, what is the best <laughs> exercise? The one you'll do. The one you'll do. So yeah, here's a so list of whatever we have, you know, yeah. 13 Take the things. step you'll take. Yeah, take, there you go. Friends, thanks for joining us on this journey. I know it's a sensitive 
topic. Again, you got questions, I'll do what I can to provide resources for you. Uh, email me, kmiller at kevinmiller.co. Uh, I'd be honored yeah. to talk with you. I hope this episode helps you drive further and most of all, enjoy the ride. Thanks so much for joining me on this journey. I look forward to meeting you in the Drive Tribe community for ongoing discussions about each episode. You can subscribe to the Drive Drop newsletter for weekly updates. Find it all at kevinmiller.co along with all our social media and video clips. Until next time, I hope this episode helps you drive further and enjoy the ride.